Hey there everyone, how we all doing? Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at all of the known game modes in Titanfall 2 and how they are different or how they are the same as game modes from Titanfall 1 or any changes that have been made since the tech test. Let's take a look. First up, let's take a look at everyone's favorite game mode, Attrition. Uh, the scoring system has been altered a little bit this time around, so here's just the basic rundown is that Grunts and Spectres are both worth one point per kill this time around. This has changed from Titanfall 1, in which Grunts were worth one, and Spectres were worth two. Uh, in addition to this, Pilots are now worth five, which is up from four from the last game, and Titans are now worth ten, which is up from five from the last game. So Titans are now technically twice as valuable in terms of attrition points. Um, they have changed the way that the maximum score works, so now instead of you having to get 300 points to win, it's up to 400 points to win. So this will accommodate some of the higher point values on uh, the more high value targets, like pilots and titans, uh, while not making you reach that total too quickly. So a little different, and I'm gonna be, gonna be very, uh, very keen to see how this actually works out in the final release of the game. It's gonna make grunt farming Still effective, but a little less effective. Like, you can't just stomp around at your Titan, happen to find a drop pod with four Spectres in it, and crush all of them and get eight points for your team. Like, it's it, that might be a little bit too much. So now it's only going to be about four points. Uh, plus, there's going to be a few other minions spawning on the map. Like, you have Reapers now. You have Stalkers. Uh, those are going to be worth some intermediate amount of points. And... Uh, will change the dynamic of how you acquire points and the speed at which you're going to finish games. So very keen to see how this is going to finish up in the final release of the game. In addition to that, uh, a lot of people have been talking about the number of minions on the map and how it doesn't feel like the maps are as alive as they were in the first Titanfall. And from my understanding, from just seeing a few comments by developers on Reddit or the forums or wherever, is that the minion counts are not really that different from Titanfall 1. But the reason that you're feeling like the the population of maps might be a little bit different is that all the different minions in this game, as opposed to from Titanfall 1, uh, they have different movement patterns and different areas that they like to go to or can't go to. Like for example, Reapers are pretty, pretty large. They can't go inside of a lot of buildings, so they generally tend to stay outside and stay a little nearer to where they were initially dropped. Whereas Grunts and Spectres might be a little bit more inclined to move forward and push through the map and be a little bit more aggressive, with the uh, Stalkers usually being somewhere in between just because they are so slow. So you're going to see minions a little bit more spread out in this game. There's still just as many as there used to be, but you're not going to see these huge conglomerations of like 15 grunts in one little area of the map because they're not all walking together anymore. You're going to see like a group of three or four grunts and then a group of three or four specters somewhere else, then a group of three or four stalkers somewhere else, and then a reaper behind all of them. So it's just different how everyone is, uh, is positioning themselves, at least on the AI side. Apart from that, though, things really haven't changed, and that's probably a good thing. Attrition really should remain simple, remain relatively brainless, and again, the word brainless is not a bad word. It's not, like, negative or derogatory towards the game mode. It's totally okay that some game modes don't require a lot of brain power. Like, there's plenty of times where I don't want to get and capture the flag because I have to think really hard and play really hard. I just want to play a quick match and just kill stuff. I can use suboptimal gear and just not care about it. Just have fun playing a video game, right? Like, who... Who would do that? Play fun, like play a video game for fun? What absurd, uh, what absurd set of circumstances would make me do that? But you know, it's it's fine that the game mode operates the way it does. It's really really fun. Uh, from the little bit that I got to play it, I actually have started to enjoy attrition from Titanfall One for the same reasons that I just listed. Is that brainless fun is okay sometimes, and that's what I want sometimes. So really excited to play this mode in Titanfall Two. Very much so unchanged for the most part, apart from some scoring differences, which you're not really going to care about a whole lot anyways if you're actually just playing this game mode exclusively like you're not going to play it seriously competitively and like try to min max your point to point game ratios like you're just trying to shoot stuff and have fun right so this game mode is excellent for that purpose next up we will talk about some bounty hunt so there have been a few changes to bounty hunt between the technical test and this version of titanfall 2 that we've played now this is not like the release version quote unquote but it's very much so close to it you know it, their builds are changing multiple times every day i'm sure but the build that they forked off and the build that they made available to us to play um during this pc capture event weekend was pretty close as far as i know so they've made a few updates to bounty hunt uh a big thing that you're going to be seeing on your screen here uh, throughout my footage of playing Bounty Hunt is when you kill somebody, uh, be, it, be it a pilot or grunt or whatever, you see um, 
the amount of money that you're earning from killing that target explode out from the target. So you kill a grunt, you see $10 pop out for your bank and $10 pop out for your bonus. So that's going to be happening with pretty much every target that you kill in Bounty Hunt. Um, and it's going to make it a lot easier to tell how much money that you're earning and where that money is going. It's a really, really great UI change because it just pops up really quickly and then disappears again. And it's a great little uh, indicator that you have actually killed a grunt or minion or whatever, um, as opposed to that kill noise that you get when you kill a pilot. It's, it's a great corollary to that without polluting your ears and without polluting your screen too much. Very much so enjoy it. One of the bigger changes that they've made to Bounty Hunt is actually the locations of the turn-in points. They are much more centrally located now. So they're not set up in the uh, bases on opposite sides of the maps, like a million years away from each other. They're set pretty much at the middle of the map on both sides, just at least very much so close to it. So it's going to keep pilots a lot closer, it's going to keep everyone engaged in the game, it's not going to create these really slow moments where like for 30 seconds or a minute everyone is completely separated from each other except the one or two people who are being cheeky and trying to cross the map and just hassle the enemy team and try to make it as hard as possible for them to turn in. So while these changes are not 100% what I thought would actually make the game mode better, I do think that it's a huge leap in the right direction and I'm a whole lot more excited to play in this game mode come the final release of Titanfall 2, at least in comparison to the tech test version which was kind of a mess. This is way, way better and it's definitely a game mode that you can tell Respawn has iterated on a whole lot to get it right and they're finally pretty much there. Next, let's take a very brief look at the differences between Titanfall 1 and Titanfall 2's hardpoint modes. So in the first game, basically you capture a point and your team will own that point until the enemy team gets in there and claims it for their own. Very much so similar to the hardpoint modes or uh, domination modes in Call of Duty, if you're familiar with those modes. But how does it differ in Titanfall 2? Well, they have called it Amped Hardpoint in this version. So what does Amped mean? Well, when you amp a hard point, that means that you are getting double score per unit of time. So, how do you amp a hard point? Well, first you must already own a hard point. So, let's say that there is points A, B, and C on a map. That's true for literally every hard point map in the game. So, when you own, let's say, A point. Let's just call it A point. Let's say when you own A, you are able to continue standing on that point, and you will see a second progress meter begin to fill. Over the course of, I believe, 60 seconds, you can do what's called amping your hard point. So generally, this is something that you want to do with a few teammates. You don't want to do it by yourself because it's going to take forever. But you get a few people on there, that time is shared. So if you have three people on, then it's going to be every one second of time, there's three seconds ticking off on that timer. Does that, you know, hopefully that makes sense. So it effectively becomes like 20 seconds to amp it as opposed to 60. So the more teammates you have on there, the faster you amp it. Once that point becomes amped, you start receiving double score per unit of time. So however often hard points tick and give you score for the actual scoring mechanics of the game, you get them twice as fast if you have a hard point amped. So this changes the game mode very significantly. It makes it much slower, makes it much more campy and defensive. Um, personally, as you can already tell by my description, I'm not a fan of these changes pretty much at all. Uh, Titanfall is a game that I enjoy being very fast, very... Um, aggressive and I don't feel that I'm very much rewarded for going into an enemy's hard point and then trying to take it over just based on how quickly they respawn how close they respawn to the hard point it just doesn't oftentimes seem worth it to go on the offensive pretty much I take my A point the enemy takes their C point and we are eternally fighting over B and if one of us one of us gets to amp B then holy crap we're in so much of a lead um, I guess that's okay, that there is a few game modes that I don't like, and I don't enjoy the mechanics of them. There's not an inherent problem with that. Uh, not every single game mode has to appeal 100% to me. There's all kinds of other gamers who try to achieve different things out of the game, and you know maybe they want to play the game a little bit more slowly, a little bit more tactically, and that's fine. But for me personally, I'm not the hugest fan. Next up, Last Titan Standing. So this has been actually a very surprising fan favorite so far from all the people that I've been talking to about Titanfall 2. I never thought there would be anywhere near as much excitement and just chatter about Last Titan Standing of all game modes. I mean, I know it had a small community from Titanfall 1, and I really enjoyed participating in it here and there when I could, but man, the response has been absolutely fantastic for Titanfall 2. So one of the big and very controversial changes between Titanfall 1 and 2 is the lack of shields on your titan when you drop and the lack of rechargeable shields in general 
So this has been a huge talking point for a lot of people, and I'm not going to get too much into detail with it in this video. This is something that I'm going to talk about at a later date into more depth once I've actually collected my thoughts a little bit more, done a little bit more research. But uh, suffice it to say that Last Titan Standing plays very differently in Titanfall 2 than it did in Titanfall 1. Uh, however, you have the addition of neutral batteries on the map. And I guess neutral batteries is kind of redundant because batteries are always neutral anyways. But they respawn on the map periodically. I believe every one minute you have three batteries that respawn on the map. And, well, they're neutral. You can go ahead and pick them up at the very beginning of the game. You don't have to pull them out of a Titan. They just are sitting on a little pedestal and they respawn uh, regularly. So the idea there is that if you want to take the risk of exiting your titan leaving your team in a you know 4v5 or 5v6 fight or basically just a man down fight you could potentially power up your titan give yourself extra health and some core charge pretty much for free as long as your team is able to uh to handle being a man down uh, i guess that's not the only situation you might pick one up you know there's plenty of situations where your titan might simply be damaged you might be ahead on titans or you might be behind but you're on the other side of the map and you want to heal up while you have a quick moment to do that uh, Whatever the case that may be, this is a very, very, very interesting change to the game mode. It's going to change the dynamics of how it's approached. It's going to make the strategy of getting out of your Titan and putting it into guard mode at the very start of a match to harass as a pilot with your charge rifle for a little while a lot more interesting because it's going to give that pilot more things to do than simply charge rifle people for a million years before they get back into their Titan and actually start using it. Um, it's a very, very interesting way of approaching the game mode. It opens up a lot of possibilities, and I'm excited to see what that does for the full release. Another change is that now, between every round, there is, I think, a 12 to 15 second delay, where you actually will see the Titans that every person on your team has picked, as well as their loadout. So you will see all of their kits that they have selected, and you can effectively build your team, you can coordinate with your team, you can get on voice communications and say, hey, you know, we have four legions and one Ronin. Is this really a good team composition? Does somebody want to switch? Or however you want to do it. But it gives you time to coordinate, to plan, and to just be as effective as you can as a unit. Because if you're not playing as a unit in Last Titan Standing, you will lose and you will lose hard. Anyways, getting back to the actual mechanics of how Last Titan Standing works in Titanfall 2, uh, you're going to be playing a best of seven in this game mode, so that means that you must win a total of four out of the seven rounds that you play in order to win the game. In addition to this, they have changed the way that the timer works. Well, I guess the timer works the same, but when you get to the last 30 seconds of the match, every player on the map is revealed to the opposite team. So this will prevent uh, the situations in Titanfall 1 where people would kind of cheese the match and they would try to just run away. You know, if it's like two Titans to two and everyone's really hurt, instead of trying to fight and win the game, they would run away and just try to win on total Titan health uh, or something like that. Or if they had one more Titan left to oppose, oppose the other team, it would make more sense to run away and just keep that one Titan alive so they win on a Titan count instead of, you know, anything else. So now, with everyone being revealed during the last 30 seconds, it forces that play style to be a little bit weaker. Um, it's going to make those comebacks a little bit more likely to happen. It's going to just prevent a lot of cheese that used to happen in Titanfall 1's last Titan standing. It's overall a very positive change, I believe. And finally, let's talk about the changes to capture the flag. Now, one thing that I've noticed, and I'm not sure if this is even true or not, um, but this is kind of my speculation. So, when we were playing Capture the Flag on Eden, it was five flags to win the game. So you needed to capture five flags, and you can see the uh, indicator on the top of your screen here showing five flags on Eden. But when you switched over to the other brand new map, they were only asking for three flags in order to win the game as opposed to five. So I'm not sure if they're balancing the number of flag caps needed to win per map, or if that's just a setting that was changed in between games and I didn't know about, or what the idea there is. But it seems like it's persisting between games. For every CTF match that I played on Blackwater, it's going to be three flags, but every CTF match that I played in Eden is five. So I don't know if this is going to make it to the final game, if this is a bug, if this is just an oversight, or if they're really balancing the game in this way. Um, I don't really have any comments on, on, you know, if they are balancing it that way, I don't really have any comments on whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing. I I have no idea. But it's, uh, it's just different. I, I, it might be a cool idea. It might be really bad. I don't know. But... Uh, I'm sure that at least gives us the idea that we're going to be able to change the number of flags to capture, uh, hopefully in private matches. I mean, that's probably a bit of a stretch, but, you know, 
perhaps that's a reality. I would certainly hope that that's a reality. One little quick note that I wanted to make, if you have a really astute eye, is that you'll notice that you do not see Titan counters for each team in this game mode. Uh, whereas if you're playing Attrition or Bounty Hunt or whatever, you do in fact see Titan counters for each mode. So I just wanted to make a note that this is going to be in the final game from the discussions that I have with a couple of developers. They will be putting it in. It just was not in this particular build. Overall, Capture the Flag still feels just like good old Capture the Flag. There's not really a whole lot of fundamental changes there apart from the uh, flag return timer so i am cautiously optimistic about it now f returning flags in titanfall one might have been a little bit too easy sometimes like there might have been a five guys defending a flag but you know if you're able to just to punch through them for just a second and you just touch the flag as an instant return whereas now you have to stand on it for a moment so is it a good thing that you know, that, that a single pilot can't return a flag like that, like they couldn't Titanfall 1? I'm not sure. You know, we have to play a lot, a lot, a lot of games in order to even have a beginning of understanding of how the meta is actually going to work and whether or not it's a good change for the game. But I'm relatively certain that changing that timer is going to be pretty simple for Respawn to do if they were to find out that it's too short or too long or whatever in its current state. Uh, I'm sure that they'll be more than willing to actually change that around. Apart from that, though, Capture the Flag is feeling fantastic. It's definitely going to be one of my most played game modes, if not my absolutely most played game mode. Really looking forward to uh, more experience with it in the final release of the game. I think for the most part, that covers all the major differences between every game mode. Um, let me know in the comment section down below if there's anything in particular that I've missed or anything that you want me to add that I didn't talk about in the video here. Um, and for those of you watching, the comment section is a really great place for you to check out periodically to find out any new information about the differences between game modes because I'm sure that there's going to be at least one little fact somewhere that I missed or got wrong in this video. So you're going to see all any corrections that you've made or any new things that you're going to want to learn um, in that comment section down there. So make sure you're checking that out, guys. Thank you all for watching. Hope you learned something new. And I will Dominate. see you next time with the next Titanfall 2 video. You all take care. Have a good day.